Now I want to show you another way to do database reverse engineering, and specifically we're going to use Forge for this trick. So we ran a demonstration earlier of Forge. You might want to go back and review that one on the video if, in case you've kind of forgotten how Forge gets set up. But I'm going to come back to JBoss Central. There's nothing about Forge listed here or in File New. We'll, we'll probably add that in the future, but just know that the magic keyword for Forge is Control 4. Control 4 on the keyboard, would you like to run the Forge runtime? And I'll say yes. And the Forge runtime will get bootstrapped up. It actually is a command line tool that we bootstrapped into the IDE itself. So here it is running right there. And I have the commands like ls and pwd. We mentioned these in the first demonstration. But now I want to actually use Forge to build my project. And so I'm going to show you, I have this other script out here. And I'm just going to use it as node so I could, don't forget the command. So uh, uh, new project named. Uh, we're going to call this Forge Demo. Um, uh, db. How about that? There we go. And com dot uh, forge demo db. Okay. And then now we have a basic forge project. Notice it starts building it directly here. Uh, I'm going to close all others. And we're, we know it's coming to life. All right. So we got we got some more things to do here. Next thing we want to do is we want to install the forge plugin for Hibernate tools. So if you actually type in forge here and hit tab. You can say install plugins and then hibernate tools you have to type in. So this is going to go reach out there and grab and I have to spell hibernate tools correctly. Oh, I said list plugins, not install plugin. It would be helpful if we actually typed in install um, plugin correctly. At least I can recover from my error. All right, so it goes out and makes a connection. It takes a few minutes or few moments to go out there and make the connection, download the pieces that it needs, and install that directly inside Forge here running on my local machine. Uh, while that's running, I'll show you the database we're going to connect to. We have the Sequila H2 database. We used this in a previous demonstration. It's just H2 running out here in its own command prompt. I can then also, I've installed um, the H2 console underneath JBoss itself. So I come in here and say run select by from city. You can see the nice thing about the Sequila database is that it has a bunch of stuff in it already, and that's why I like it. So it's a complicated schema with a bunch of data already in it. You can see select splat from film, and it's got a bunch of data already listed in there. So once we have our, our application up and running, um, we'll be able to actually see real data in it. So the H2 console under deployments is listed right here, H2 console. Just drag and drop it in. It comes from the quick starts, and you're ready to go. And the Sequila database itself comes from Max Anderson's. Uh, GitHub. So if you go out to GitHub, you can just do a git clone and grab that and you'll get the files locally. Okay? And all I did was add a bat file. You can just pretty much copy what's in the .sh and convert it to a .bat file for your Windows installation. So it looks like that Forge plugin is now installed and now I want to do the persistent setup. Okay? So I'm going to do persistent setup. Hit tab. Setup. Provider. Hibernate. Alright. Tab. Container. Uh, JBoss. 7. All right, and there we go. And then, nope. All right, I pretty much just take the defaults. If you notice, the persistence XML is generated for me as this project gets converted into something that can uh, handle persistence. And we, that was important. We want to be able to handle persistence if we're going to have JPA entities inside this project. And the next one here is a bit trickier. So this is where we configure the settings. So generate entities, uh, configure settings, okay? And I'm just going to let it prompt me. So uh, I'm going to hit return there. I want all tables, splat, all schema, splat, all catalog, splat. Now, what is the package for the generated entities? So I said com dot sutter forge demo db dot model. That's where I want them to go. Now this is the JDBC driver. So I know that it's uh, org dot h2 dot driver. And then where is that driver on the file system? So I'll just show you using Explorer where it lives. Oh, come on. Here we go. So if I go to C, getting started, and the Sequila, Sequila H2, uh, this is where that file lives. So it's kind of located a long ways away, but we just got to remember its name. And uh, in a future version of this, maybe we'll make this a little bit easier to select. But right now, I need to highlight and hit OK. All right. So, slash, getting started. Uh, Sequila, 
h2, and then the name of the jar file. Okay, the JDBC URL right here. So we're going to go in and say mark. Again, you can type all these things, but I tend to forget them. If you notice, I've been through this presentation a few times. Oh, that didn't go as expected. I didn't actually highlight it. So there's actually a gotcha in Windows land. What I'm going to do though is I can recover from this error. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of type in uh, dialect and then uh, h2 dialect. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. I made a mistake. All you got to do is run the command again, and this time it'll it'll keep what I previously entered. I'll say yep, yep. Uh, that one looks good, and uh, this is the one I messed up on. And this is a Windows trick. I had highlighted using the mark command here. I'd highlighted what I wanted, but I hit Control C on the keyboard. You have to hit Enter on the keyboard to do a copy and DOS land. So let's do a Control V now. Paste that in. SA. There we go. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. So if I did that right, magic happens. Uh, generate entities. Let's see. All right. Look at that. We have entities. So there's my actor entity. So that's fantastic. Let me make sure I do. I'm keeping up with my script here. Okay. Now all we want to do is generate the CRUD associated with it. CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. So I'm going to say scaffold setup, scaffold type, faces. And I'm going to say uh, overwrite. Okay. Yes. Yes. And that's going to then generate for me the web application surrounding those entities. If I come in here to uh, source main, web app, see stuff is magically happening here. There we go. So source main, web app, it had to refresh. So it's getting added in there. And that's just a scaffolding setup. That just gives us the menu system and whatnot, uh, the initial look and feel. Now I want to scaffold from entity, um, and we were going to say dot, dot, dot model, okay, and overwrite. Let's see if we got that right. Go go go! All right, there it goes. It's cruising through it now, and I can. If you watch closely, you'll see these things getting updated. And what it's doing is simply going through all the JP entities and producing a user interface around each one that allows me to search through those records, add new records, delete the record uh, in the database. And there's a couple more things we have to do. If you remember the persistence XML earlier, it's actually tied to the example DS. I need to modify that and say it's going to be Sequila DS data source, which we don't have a Sequila data source yet. And I'm going to say update here. I don't want to create and drop an existing data model with existing data. I want to just update, which means if I add, if I have new entities, it'll add those new entities to the, to the schema. Okay, let's see how far along has this guy gotten here. All right, so there's the backing beans for the JSF pages. There we go. There's the web application. You can see uh, there's a create a search. So if I want to open this up in the Visual Page Editor, and, you know I can come in here and start messing around with these guys if I want to. Um, if I want to change the look and feel for these these components, but it looks like it is done. I can issue a build here. All right, that just is a that's basically a Maven package, MVM package. If you're at the command line, and then I can right click. Oh, we need to do one more thing. So other. So I want to do file new other, data source. Hit next. And I'm going to pick AS7, and I already have the Sequila connection set up here. Let me hit edit. This is from a previous demonstration where I used Hibernate tools to do the reverse engineering as opposed to um, Forge to do the reverse engineering. Both use Hibernate tools, one the GUI edition, one the command line edition. But you can see right here I have my generic JDBC driver. I can do a test connection. So again, that same connection parameter there, the same jar file, everything you saw earlier already set up. I'm going to hit OK, and then AS7. It's important that you pick the right format of that. And if I open him up and look at his source, okay, the only thing I want to tweak about him is I want to take out this, I want to change the driver name, okay, make it H2. And that's because the H2 driver is already installed. If I come out here and hit profile over here and data sources, example DS, see the driver H2 right there? So it's not H2 1.4. whatever. Dot driver, uh, jar, it's just H2. 
those two letters. So that's why I want to set that up correctly. And now I can right click and mark as deployable. It gives me a warning message. Ignore that warning message. Hit OK. Some people were deploying borers and ears and stuff like that. In this case, we just want to deploy the DS. If I go back to my um, console here, you can see there's the Sekila DS. It shows up here in deployments. So it's a hot deployed guy. Uh, and I, I updated my persistence XML. Oh, there's a slight difference there. Over here in Sekila DS. Notice the pool name is Sekila. Data source is Sekila. I had DS here. So let's take off that DS. We've got to get the name right. Hit finish. And if I did everything correctly, we right click, run on server. It compiles the application and then shoots it over as a war file into the deployments directory. And while that's working, I'll actually show you that. Uh, so let's go look at this. This guy, if he comes up correctly, it just came up in the background there, and I so it went faster than before I could get out there. So there's the forge demo db.war, and then if we click on actor, and then you can see there's all the actors in the system and, and all the films in the system. So the same thing. So again, the same data that we saw earlier over here in our H2 console. Now we're seeing that data right within the custom application. So that's forge being uh, using Hibernate tools plug in to do a database reverse engineering and the CRUD scaffolding around that.